hello guys welcome to my channel chemical diary today video i'm going to explain you about the what are the potential hazards and what are the pollution how we handle the pollution in sulfuric acid plant so i'm going to teach you about today air pollution control devices we use and where it is located and how we treat the effluent we generate in sulfuric acid plant and how we handle the gaseous pollutant removal by using fabric cloth filter press or ro system or clarifiers those things and you are going to see about the wet grass scrubbing and uh, dike system sampling system heat tracing and liquid sulfur gas scrubbing and uh, so this video especially for one of my viewer sign subscriber he asked me when one of the good question uh, how we handle pollution in sulfuric acid plant and the best answer for this is that the sulfuric acid plant is set up the sulfuric acid is plant is set up to reduce the pollution in environment and i can say this is the best answer which describe this see uh, in last video i uploaded about sulfuric acid production by dcd double contact double absorption so i am going to tell you that we receive uh, sulfur from petrol see this is a petrol with sulfur when petroleum is uh, sent for distillation so petrol is separated and sulfur is separated so this sulfur we use here and we make sulfuric acid so if this sulfur is not removed so there will be when petrol is used in vehicles or industry it will produce sulfur dioxide so it is harmful to the environment so that's why we have set up this dcda double contact double absorption process so that we can reduce pollution from the environment and make environment absolutely good and uh, sustainable for the life so this is the reason and uh, i know this is commercial plant but this plant reduces pollution from the environment if it uh, handle or it uh, rely on operating condition standard operating uh, practices so let's go through so i'm not going to explain you about the complete process and as i have covered in other videos so today say the double contact double absorption so now i speak about the pollution see this process is dcda double contact double absorption it means one time we are contacting uh, so2 so3 gas after that again we are going to contact so double time we are contacting remaining gas whatever the there again we are contacting it means to 98 percent we can remove so2 so3 contaminants uh, from the air and after that uh, a double absorption so whatever the gas has been absorbed in sulfuric acid if remaining 10 or 5 percent amount that also we again contact with acids so this is how we make it 99.99% we remove sulfur from the gas so from the process gas so this is how we do so now let's go further for example and uh, see in my sulfuric acid pdf you have seen this process this is a funnel tower from funnel tower acid is scrubbed and whatever the gas which uh, contain very small amount of so2 will go to the scrubber this is called effluent scrubber it go here and here we have pump that is called NOH solution pump so whatever the caustic NOH will get circulated from here and um, SO2 gas or the remaining little amount of process gas which contain traces amount of SO2 SO3 will get contact with this solution and pure gas will come here and it will go to the stack through here stack it's go and uh, here we have analyzer so generally we check uh, analyzer that uh, is there anything uh, i mean to say that uh, if too much so2 is going in analyzer so when we see too much so2 is going that then we add more air 
we add more air so when we add more air uh, then it will react with uh, so2 and become so3 and it becomes sulfuric acid so if air is less then it will not uh, contact with other so for this reason we do uh, we have analyzer and and at the final gas whatever the gas is coming here to the stack we check so2 percent how much so2 in ppm so3 in ppm nitrogen oxygen inert gases how much it contain if there is a very less amount of oxygen and uh, too much amount of so2 so3 just simply we will add more air in the furnace so more air uh, why this happening because air is less that's why reactions are not taking place in the converter in the furnace that is why so2 so3 going to the uh, atmosphere so at the stack we will check the exit gases we check so this is how we control the air now you are going to see how we control the uh, water pollution and you know in this scrubber liquid is generated liquid effluent waste effluent is generated so we have to tackle this also so I am going to teach you about this today how we tackle this this is a plant and I can say this is effluent treatment plant see this is the process gas which is coming uh, and it go to acid tower and from acid tower from top it comes and it go to scrubber this is called effluent scrubber in this and in this we add water as well as NOH so this pump continuously circulate continuously circulate all the all this uh, NOH solution will continuously circulate in this with the help of pump so whatever the gas come will come here and this wet gas scrubber it react with uh, NOH so you know acid plus base become a salt and uh, it neutralizes it. so this solution will be collected continuously and after that whatever the stack is there whatever the exit gas will come to the stack so here how here it comes and it goes directly to the environment atmosphere generally in all the industries we keep stack at high level why because it it, it will dilute in the air easily if we if we distribute or if we supply in the bottom so it will remain you know from the stack the existing gas mainly contain traces amount of so2 traces not uh, in huge or low traces amount of so2 and so3 and uh, inert gases nitrogen and oxygen is completely used in furnace as well as converter so there is no chances of convert so if it release in the surrounding so there will be less oxygen environment so, so the people who inhale he may feel difficulty in breathing so that is why we send it to the stack and this air will have acid mist so that is why it, sh it should the height of the stack should be more so when gas go here it carry away some mist particle so this mist particles collected and sent to the effluent collection tank for sending to wastewater treatment now let's go what we do with the generated effluent continuously this pump run so when it contact with acidic gas it become neutralizes so as as time passes the solution get thicker and uh, concentration also become very bad so what we have to do we have to charge new so for that reason we have one provision this is a line which is going to the effluent collection tank so this pump continuously send when when it signals that parameters and uh, NOH pH is more uh, pH is more and it, it become more basic or more acidic if more basic water is added in this and if more acidic then uh, amount of 50 percent of 20 percent amount of uh, effluent will transfer to here and we have another control wall with the help of the control wall water is added and according to the pH NOH is added so continuously this process take place so this is how we reduce the air pollution now let's, now let's go to water pollution the effluent is generated but what we do with effluent if we, if we release this in the 
land um, it, uh, it's very harmful and if we uh, release in sea body or water bodies those water body also get contaminated so for this reason for the safe environment we send it to effluent treatment so now you are going to see the, the what is special equipment we use to treat this in effluent collection tank we collect this continuously so here pH analyzer will be there it checks continuously if pH is more it's as too much acidic then NOH is added so it will be neutralized so the solution should be neutralized condition so this neutralized solution with the help of pump it go to the vibratory classifier in that uh, there is a, they give some vibration according to the motor speed and there is a VFD according to the um, amount of liquid and solid and clarifiers so it goes here and with the help of vibratory skin whatever the liquid is generated is sent for the wastewater treatment plant for, for a water collection tank I can say simply and whatever the sludge uh, sludge or gummy material is collected is sent to the uh, frame filter press so this is the leaf filter frame filter press it is nothing but just you take example of there is one filter cloth or stone and you put some slurry material and uh, sludge material and you take another stone uh, or a cloth and you press so once you press water is separated and you will get a thick cake so this is how it work so with the help of pump uh, all the sludge will transfer to the filter frame press and here the water was the sludge is transferred and it become dry cake so dry cakes are are collected in the bin movable bin and whatever the water will send for the treatment water treatment plant in water treatment plant uh, you know that still uh, the, this water is uh, not harmful for reuse so for um, to reuse this plant to reuse this water we send it to the collection tank in which they see the whatever the pH so once it is neutralized this safe for the for safe for the water treatment why because it eat away the all the plant so once it's neutralized then we send to the charcoal filter activated carbon filter and after that uh, activated carbon filter the water goes for the RO RO membrane in RO membrane they clean uh, with the help of high pressure pump so whatever the sludge is collected it again comes to back to effluent effluent collection tank and whatever the sludge again it it separated in the filter press so this is how we handle liquid pollution so now you have seen how we manage air pollution how we control and uh, now I'm going to explain you about the what are the potential hazard in this plant The potential hazard in this sulfuric acid plant is gas leak. Gas leak such as sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide and H2S. So if we made a good uh, material, if we have a good material like we use SS or CS, uh, so there may be less chances of uh, leak. And if uh, the material or the lines are dry, so it, it, it will have a long life because acid will eat away the lines. So to avoid the gas leak, there will be a flange guard and ins continuous insulation also there. So that um, insulation not only reduces the uh, temperature, uh, not only um, what I can say that control the temperature of the line, but also it uh, it hold the temperature and uh, avoid leaks. And another potential hazard in sulfuric acid plant is acid burn. So you know acid burn is common sulfuric acid plant if you does not follow the PP. So it's better to always follow and use PPE and third one high pressure system uh, in one of my video I explained you that large amount of heat is generated so there thereby steam uh, we utilize uh, heat to produce steam so it's a high pressure system so for high pressure system we use PSV PRV to control the pressure in case of uh, pressure tank get too much pressurized and thermal stress this uh, furnace temperature and all the converter we maintain more than 1000 degrees so there is a thermal stress and uh, last one is air quality monitoring so we maintain the quality of air with the help of uh, analyzer air analyzer in which we see uh, the things that uh, air air quality we are sending to environment that should know so2 and so3 or if there it should be in 10 ppm like that 
so um let's go overview see in sulfur furnace we add air and sulfur so it become so2 after that so there may be chances here so2 may leak so there will be tight fitting and good quality flanges which will not allow you to leak and in the flanges we use uh, flange guard so that leak can be arrested so after so2 it go to so3 so again here air is added and more amount of air will make so2 into so3 and after that here acid and after that it goes through the scrubbing tower stack so in exit gas you see there will be o2 or oxygen o2 inert gases so2 so3 nitrogen for example if so2 concentrate at the exit gas we take sampling and we send to the lab so once uh, the lab and after one lab analysis we check the amount of nitrogen amount of so2 amount of so3 and inert gases and o2 if so2 concentration is so2 in more ppm then we will add more air in uh, air blower to the furnace so uh, if uh, more so2 what does it mean there is a less amount of air in the reaction so that's why reactions are not taking place that's why we get so2 in the stack so to reduce this we will add more uh, air again so daily uh, while running this plant continuously this is monitor this uh, this monitor not only with the help of cem continuous emission mon monitoring with the help of analyzer but also we do sampling and we send to to, to to the lab so in the exit gas we should have nitrogen and so2 in 10 ppm and so3 should be in 5 ppm and inert gas and inert gas is something nothing but helium neon argon and uh, it should and o2 should also be present so if uh, if we, if we want all this parameter range then we should have more amount of oxygen in furnace if we uh, even in another video, video I have submitted you about the material balance so according to material balance we use large amount of how much amount of air is required for how much amount of sulfur so this is how we will use if we add more air again there may be chance reaction may not take place and furnace and uh, converter temperatures may go low so for that reason we uh, supply amount of correct amount of air and amount of, correct amount of sulfur if we material balance well and we supply correct amount of sulfur and air then there will be no so2 and there will be no inert gases or like that so everything will be in range so this is how we maintain pollution uh, and air uh, this is how we maintain the quality of air in the uh, in the exit gas so now again I am going to teach you about so this is the stack so according to here we see and this this is not used scrubber is not continuously in practice this only used during uh, startup or if we have a problem see this is our sulfuric acid plant and uh, I have explained you well uh, in before so just I will tell you how we control the pollution see from final tower the gas coming here and whatever the sulfuric acid is sprayed so SO3 will get absorbed so the remaining ga ex exit gas process gas will go here so it react with uh, NOH and neutralizes so the remaining gas will go to the analyzer but this portion will only be used during startup or if there is a problem in the plant in which we unable to convert all SO2 into SO3 or we cannot convert SO3 into sulfuric acid why because no think that our plant is healthy we have a good furnace temperature and we have a good uh, converter temperature so at that time all the reaction will be converted into SO3 SO2 and it will get absorbed so there is no chances of SO2 going to here so we have one bypass valve which directly sent to the stack without going but we use this scrubber when our parameters are out of range so that we neutralize this so2 so3 and uh, the gas should be go clear and should not uh, harm or contaminate the environment so this is how we do and uh, one thing i forget to explain you i will tell you in scrubber system when we add water 
when we add water NOH and continuous reaction take place so at low temperature there may be chances of cooling of the land and plugging take place so for this reason we supply heat tracing to this unit so when we supply heat tracing so it will not get clogged for example when temperature of the effluent when go low at that time heat tracing line will get activate and heat the line so plugging and um, plugging and clogging of the lines will not take place so this is about the dcda and uh, this is a, this is another time i'm going to tell you that this plant is designed and set up to reduce pollution from the environment if follow the good practices so the the main thing i want to highlight, highlight that is how we maintain the uh, how we control the pollution of air and water now I'm, i will tell you how we maintain the leaks in acid tanks this tank is put in a dike so if there is any leak all liquid all sulfuric acid will be collected in the dike and will not go to the other places so people will be safe so whenever people enter into into the dike they see the condition and they step in and uh, another thing i would like to highlight that these uh, tanks are very are designed very well so that they are not leak generally uh, these tanks are made of stainless steel or else uh, carbon steel if carbon steel is there underneath inside they do brick lining so when brick lining is there and these bricks are acid resistant it will not allow to leak so at a time whatever whatever the acid is there it will be inside the brick only and it will not go to the body of the or skin of the tank so there may be no chances of leak so this is how we maintain air pollution control so in this video if you have learned about air pollution how we control SO2, SO3 and H2S yeah another thing I forget to tell you that H2S this is the dirty sulfur pit and molten sulfur pit in this uh, we receive sulfur from the tanker and we put here and uh, we maintain the temperature around 130 degree so around 130 degree there may be a vapor formation of sulfur so on the sulfur pit continuous vapor formation take place and sulfur vapor will come so here we have scrubber sulfur scrubber so whatever the vapor is generated it go to the scrubber and it go here here we will have one knockout pl plate so whatever the sulfur vapor get generated it cool down and we will have here heat tracing so as soon as uh, after some time whatever the uh, what I can say that continuous uh, vaporization take place and sulfur get uh, accumulated here so again uh, it uh, we have temperature element it increase the heat according to, to the weight as soon as heat is increased the sulfur get melt and will come uh, to the tank again back so whatever the vapor generated vapors get cooled here and become liquid sulfur and comes here so this is how we maintain H2S emission in this water if in this sulfur pit if water is added so there may be possible chances of formation of H2S in this so here we have pollution about uh, H2S vapors or uh, sulfur vapors so this is how we maintain here and furnace also and here also so this is how we maintain so now you have seen about uh, air pollution control and uh, another thing is that we have so many gas detector we will have gas detector near H2S gas detector near uh, this sulfur pit and uh, near furnace we may have gas detector of SO2 SO3 and in uh, near the converter also we will have SO2 SO3 gas detector if there is any leak in the plant SO2 SO3 leak in the plant we will get to notify in DCS about the leak so this gas detector once they detect the gas leak they detect us then uh, as soon as we find it we will stop the sulfur pump and we purge the system with air and after that we will stop arrest the leak so this is how we do and other thing is that gaseous pollutant are removed here and we may have either on top of mist eliminator so mist eliminator remove completely mist and whatever the small part amount of mist go here and from here again it, and again from here it it comes and it collected here and this water go to the 
effluent treatment plant for treating so the pure gas will go will exit from the stack such as nitrogen and uh, inert gases and oxygen so these things are we use and um, the, uh, so I will I will end the video by saying that DCDA process double contact double absorption is used for to reduce the SO2 SO3 and pollutant in the environment so best answer for this I can say that DCDA helps in reducing the pollution so if you follow the plant procedure correctly so you will reduce the pollution you know in kerosene diesel petrol naphtha every the fossil fuel contains sulfur so this sulfur is removed in this sulfur is re uh, removed in distillation uh, they add hydrogen uh, hydrogen to the fuel so once hydrogen is added sulfur react with hydrogen to form so2 uh, h2s then again this h2s is removed in the sour water system and amine regeneration unit so after removing sulfur is remo sulfur is h2s separated and this h2s will go to cross reactor and it become and it makes sulfur so that liquid sulfur came here come here and after that again we that sulfur we utilize to make sulfuric acid and this sulfuric acid is used in pharma industry water industry steel industry and even it is used in medicines also in pharma so even it is used in water treatment and food industry so the sulfur is the pollutant if you do not remove sulfur from the petrol and if we use lies in bikes or in uh, industry it produces so2 so sulfur is removed and sent to sulfuric acid plant to make it uh, useful for the uh, for, for the industries so this is how we use so in conclusion this plant reduces the pollution from the environment thank you guys guys and uh, if you have any doubts regarding sulfuric acid plant please uh, write me in comment box or you can email me and if you have um, further more doubts you can tell me then i can make some more videos for you as i made this for one of my subscriber thank you have a nice day